I see the, the, the scrutiny that Bethany is talking about as um, heralding a w willingness, and, and I think this willingness started actually in the last administration federally, but to, to go places that, that politicians haven't always gone before, haven't gone before. And I think we're likely to see that. I think the harder questions are gonna result in a, in a willingness of, of politicians at both the federal and the state level to sort of potentially go places that they haven't gone before in terms of oversight of higher education and, and, and to the extent at the state level coordination of higher education. And I guess uh, I'd like to ask uh, Chancellor sort of how he looks at that and, and as a, the head of a, an institution, whether that's something to be feared or welcomed or? Well, I, certainly I think it's something that should be welcomed. I, I'm, I'm really feeding off of some earlier comments uh, about outcomes. Um, uh, there's an expression in Minnesota, it probably came out of Canada, you gotta skate where the puck's going to be, not where it is. And um, what that means is, is that as educators, we're asked to prepare students for jobs that don't yet exist. Uh, when you, um, uh, there's data I've seen that the top 10 jobs in 2010 were not even known about in 2004. Uh, other data where our graduates are going to have, what, 12 different jobs by the time they're age 38. So we, we've, we've, we're in this dilemma of, of trying to prepare students for this unknown future. And so we have to think more deeply about how do we prepare them to navigate and adapt to uh, this, this changing world and changing environment. Um, and, um, and just, again, building off some earlier comments, I was part of uh, a national group that, that was on the Voluntary System of Accountability for Nostalgia. And we talked a lot about student and, and, and developmental learning outcomes. What I was struck by in that conversation, unlike if I went to a scientific meeting and my background is neuroscience, the depth and richness of those conversations, how superficial the conversations were about learning, and how I really felt that we, certainly in higher education, haven't invested that kind of research prowess to really get us to better understand how we measure learning and how we're going to prepare students for this, this, this future. Um, and so that was something that uh, was important to me when I went to a new institution, is, is I really think it's a niche. Um, have an institution that's really focused on student learning. Um, and I think the kinds of questions that are being asked uh, should, are welcomed. Um, uh, it just needs, we just need to get into a deeper conversation about it. Okay. Uh, do, do you think your colleagues share that view uh, nationally? I, yes, I mean, I, um, they, don't, they don't act like it, I no, guess no, no, I'd say I, that. <laughs> Uh, there's an expression a colleague shared with me once that said, be hard on structures and soft on people. And I do think our structures sometimes uh, promote uh, siloed uh, kinds of approaches and, and, and actually institutions do pretty well at measuring the impact of students in their major. I mean, I've seen better data in that. But in terms of, of having a, a, a um, coherent uh, educational experience in lower division, that general education, which is really the foundation that's going to help them be successful in the future, that, that's not coherent. And, we're, and that's where we're struggling in terms of trying to uh, come up with the right measures of learning. Um, so uh, it, it's partly, uh, I think, a, a, a conversation about uh, the structures that we're using rather than the people's unwillingness to look at it. 